Looks like an 11 year old, unresponsive but breathing. The caller states she thinks that the patient took a sleeping pill. So I guess this is a uh, got into the parent's medication sort of thing. Yep. Sounds like that's probably what it is. So we get a call for an overdose, but the odd thing is that it's an 11 year old. I mean, when you have small children that take um, medications not meant for children and dosages not meant for children, I mean, no matter what they take, I mean, basically it's a poison. I mean, it's no different than them drinking Drano or any other, you know, cleaning agent. Fire department's here. Keeley's here. 3220 on scene. What you need, Keg? Yeah, what? Oh, hold on, hold on. When we get on scene, Keeley and the fire department are already there. And the girl, she's just acting really strange. She's kind of like restless sleeping. <laughs> so what, what, like, what's the story? They have no idea okay. what's going on with it. They don't know if she got a hold of something. Again, the mom had just got home. <laughs> okay. They didn't know what she had gotten a hold of. They didn't know what time she started acting like that. She truly did have a decreased level of consciousness. So I'm trying to figure out in Ryder right Uvedev what, you know, what is child overdose on? What did she take? And I think for the most part, most medics would agree with me that, that the calls with children are uh, very emotionally taxing, especially when they're, they're truly sick. Just gonna flop around. I believe you. I saw it hanging hey, on. Hold up, sweetheart. Just hold it. Yeah, I know, Get the IV in. Um, I think the biggest issue was, you know, the child not really knowing what's going on. And I mean, hey, kids are strong. All right, mama. I know. All right. I know, mama. Good job. So, look, baby, you can calm your nerves a little bit, OK? She's doing all right. She's breathing good. She's got good oxygen going to her brain and everything. Everything's looking OK right now. We just got to find out maybe she took something. Yeah, That's all, yeah. OK? Look, come have a seat up here, darling. Come on. But her vitals were OK. So she was caught in this weird state of where she would kind of wake up a little bit and then go back into a state of unconsciousness. New Orleans EMS to Ashna West Bank for a pediatric patient report. Ashna West Bank. Hey, it's Dan with New Orleans EMS Unit 3220. I'm en route to you with an 11-year-old female. Um, uh, it's kind of weird how she has these brief moments of lucidity where she kind of like wakes up like in a, in a terror and sees us in the truck. And when she sees us, it scares the hell out of her and she falls back asleep. Like, that's pretty much what it seemed like. She did that repeatedly. All right. All right. What happened, man? She took something. Right. She used to do this in Texas when she was living with her grandmother. And for some reason, she get in a pill. She'll take, like, not really knowing what they are. She, and she'll take you know, them. She won't know what it is. But I never had that problem with her. Right, right. Right. Yeah. So what they're going to do, they're going to do a tox <laughs> screen on her. And then we'll see how much, you know, if she have Adderall in the system or if she, whatever she had in the system, we'll, uh, we'll definitely find out the hospital. Right. Well. I think this is a great lesson why children need to be kept away from prescription medications because they can really affect the child much greater than they can affect the adult. 32, 32, 32, 32. I mean, we do that child face. What? Bro, In my brain, I was thinking, no way. There's just no way someone pepper sprayed a baby. That's some was walking by and sprayed these people with the mace for no reason. The baby's got some redness to his chest. Right. I think he's just really irritated. Right. But we can Let's get him in the truck. <laughs> his lungs sound OK. How long ago did this happen? Okay. About 40 minutes. OK. It's all right. This poor little baby is red from head to toe and has snot and saliva that is just running. It's OK. So you can see he's all red. Yeah. First thing is to get it to a controlled environment. We wanted to make sure that he wasn't having any kind of breathing problems. Yeah, I've been I mean, hey, everybody, let's just go. I know. I am so sorry this happened. How old is he? He's 
seven months old. I ain't, ain't, no, ain't nobody sitting there with nobody. I'm coming There's in with a seven-month-old male patient. Got pepper sprayed. Was he like wrong with that thing? How did he get pepper sprayed? Some uh, random person just came to uh, pepper spray a party of people that were um, in the area. Child was being held by the parents and just got caught up in the pepper spray. For us, sadly, there's nothing we can do. The best thing for this baby is going to be to get him to the ER and take as much milk as they can find and pour it all over his skin. How are you going to do a kid like that? That's sad, but that's New Orleans for you. A nine-year-old female killing weak. We're headed to a call for a uh, nine-year-old girl that's having uh, weakness for an extended amount of time, which would normally be a little benign when you're talking about an adult. But if you have a child that is weak and lethargic for an extended amount of time, I mean, that's cause for concern. What's up, babe? What you doing, love? You don't feel good? No? What's going on with her, boo? What's going on here? You weak? Uh, you want to come get a shot? Well, come on then. If you want to get a shot, then you must be set. You can just tell she doesn't feel well. And there's a couple of things that you want to check, you know, with a child that age. One is temperature, and the other is her blood sugar. I mean, she could be, you know, a new onset diabetic. She could have an infection. So you want to check temperature, blood sugar, blood pressure. You want to check all the things that could be caused in the situation. Slide all the way to the back, baby. So you woke up this morning feeling like that, baby? All right. What school you go to? Yeah. What's your favorite subject? Math. Math? That's my worst subject. Yeah. What you do for fun, baby girl? You play with toys? What kind of toys you play with? Play with Barbie dolls? Yeah? You're not scared of us, huh? I remember tripping out with him, man. We brought him. You didn't bring a doll to keep you company while he's going to the hospital? <laughs> what if I said I had a brand new one for you? That'd be good. Yeah? Keep you company in the hospital? All right. Yeah, look at that smile. Tell your mom to hook this up. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. There right. we go. <laughs> We're going to take care of you, little one. A lot of people don't know this, but Dan does carry uh, toys in the back. We don't see too many pediatric patients, so the toys might sit for two or three weeks at a time. There you go, honey bun. That's for you. All right, the train about to pull off. You know, ambulances, hospitals can be a scary place for a child. So, you know, we like to keep things to let them take into the hospital with them, at, you know, kind of cheer them up a little bit while they're there. We got to get you feeling good, and little one. Oh, Dan, it's the softy, you know? <laughs> Can't be feeling bad for two days. 32, 32, plus 6-year-old female. Her book bag is in the place. What? Her book bag is stuck in her teeth? How does a book bag get stuck in your teeth? I mean, sometimes you can kind of sit there for a minute and you're just pondering all the different ways in which this cannot possibly be true. This is the first time I've ever gotten a call for a child with a book bag yeah. stuck in their teeth. Yeah, that's a new one. Mm -hmm. I have beef jerky stuck in my teeth right now. <laughs> you want to use the book bag to get it out? <laughs> 3232 32 on scene. Hi. What did you do? I was playing a lot of books. OK, open. Uh... She had it stuck in there really well. I mean, it was up in there, all up in the gums. And you know, I don't know how she got it in there, to be honest with you. She must have been gnawing on that thing for a while. Like, I really don't know how she did it. Come here, baby. Has she had her adult teeth yet? No, that's super baby. It was baby teeth, so I was like, all right, so we have a little more room to play. Because you don't want to mess with the money maker. It should be the first rule of paramedicine. She was really cute. Don't want to mess with that. 32. All right, Miss Kyra, what grade you in? First grade. Ended up distracting her a little bit, talking about school and things like that. Let's take a look and see what we got. Look up towards the ceiling. All right. Let's see how tight it is, OK? What's your teacher's name? Give me five. All right. Miss Virginia. Miss who? Virginia. Yeah? You like her? Cool. So look, don't go chewing on that zipper anymore, OK? Mm -hmm. It goes to show you, you never really know what you're going to get. You know, 
next call could be somebody with their head blown off, but that call was just really refreshing in the fact that, you know, she was really sweet and we could help her out. Thank you. All right, sweetie. Here you go. Thank you. Bye. Crisis averted. New Orleans do have some weirdly named streets. Well, it's only weird if you're not from here. Like, New Orleans has like a French twist on everything, so yeah. I was like overcompensating for the Frenchness, and I was like, Rocha Blave. Nah, that just made you sound like an idiot, man. <laughs> Somebody's like, you said what? Is that I was like, how you say it? They was like, it's Rocha Blade. I was like, too much emphasis on the E, huh? You're going for a four-year-old male. It says he's having a bad stomach ache. Looks like they gave him some Pepto. What is he, a diarrhea? What you have for dinner, buddy? Joy and I, we're heading to a call for a four-year-old with abdominal pain. Those calls could be very tricky because a four-year-old can't really express themselves on what's going on. Even though they're four-year-old, it could be very serious. Where we going, dude? I think it's right here on the right. Right here. Let's go see this kid, dude. 3250, we're on scene. What's up, little man? You good? What was going on with him? So that stuff for days, he's been complaining about his stomach. It has been hurting real bad. He had any diarrhea or anything? He did have something like yesterday. Was it brown? It looked like it's supposed to? That's good. Does it hurt when I put, what's his name? Kobe. Kobe. Oh, like Kobe Bryant. You can shoot. He ain't feeling me, huh? Usually kids be a little bit more energetic, but I'm just seeing this patient sitting there, so I can tell that his stomach is really, really hurting. You been in an ambulance before, Kobe? No. Never. It's pretty cool, man. This is a big truck. We not gonna put nothing in your nose. My dad, he had lung cancer. Oh, they gave him oxygen. Yeah, right. we not we not gonna do <laughs> yeah. none of that, man. All right, come on, baby, let's go. Four years old. We're gonna hop up in the side right here because it'll be a little easier for him to hop up in. Ooh. I'm gonna get in first, Kobe, and then I'm gonna help you up, all right? Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Let's put this down. All right, little Kobe. So one more time, point to where your stomach hurt, little man. Right there. And it hurts when I push it? No? Kobe, let's take your jacket off. That's a little man. I got a five-year-old. Oh. Dude, about the same size. All right, little man. Teenage We're going to lower this down. Open your mouth you under your tongue. Twos, don't stop it. Good job. His belly was soft types? Yeah, dude. Almost done. There you go. 96 Poor, poor guy. All right. No fever? No fever. We're going to take this patient to the hospital for peace of mind, you know, let the mother talk to the doctor, see if something is going on. But right now, I'm not feeling anything in the stomach, and he definitely doesn't have a fever. These are all great signs. All right, man, you in luck, man. Titus love the kids, man. Titus, Titus love, the, love kids. the kids. I like that. So, Kobe, we got a little car seat back here we're going to put you in, all right? Oh. Oh, you got it. Your mom going to be right there with you, man. All right. All right, Kobe. You good? Give me up. There you mm. go. He said, get my bear back, man. It's going to be bumpy, all right, Kobe? Well, I hope you feel better soon, Kobe. The doctor's going to look at your belly and see what's causing it to hurt, OK? So we're going to a six-year-old who's having a seizure. Ooh. I wonder if he's got a history. Or a fever. He's a little old for fever out seizures, and if they're and at six years old, if you're potentially gonna be new onset or a kid with a disability. But we'll see whenever we get there. As someone who had seizures when I was a child, I feel bad for him. Thankfully, I grew out of them, but I missed out on some things. I hope this kid's as lucky as I was. I hope he grows out of his seizures. G call? Okay. I have been here before. I was gonna say, I, I remember you. Did he have a seizure with us last time? Yeah. Once we get on scene and I begin speaking with the mom and the patient, I realize I've treated him before, and I remember he has an underlying seizure disorder. Hey, Major, how are you, buddy? Can you see me? 
Hey, buddy. He doesn't have a brain tumor or anything like that, does he? Just the history of the seizures. What's your name? I see the patient's postictal, he's confused. This little boy is not having a seizure right now, and he could have another seizure. A prolonged seizure could kill him, and that's why we want to get him to the hospital. At any point, has he come out of it and, like, talked to you? He did. OK. Um, when you saw me at the school, like, he asked for ice cream. <laughs> so he was right, feeling so he's got his normal then. Straight, what you're <laughs> and mom, I'll probably get you to kind of hold um, his upper half while I'm trying to get an IV in him. You're OK, big guy. With children, I like to get an IV very quickly while they're postictal, so that way it's not as traumatic of, of an experience for him. So that if he has another seizure, we can give him medication for it. Hey, buddy. How you feel? Fine. OK. Your mom is right behind you. Can we check your temperature real quick? You open up your mouth real wide. Say, ah. Man, you're doing good. Good, thank you. 98.3. This mom is clearly concerned and worried about her kid. As a future dad, I can relate. As a parent, you always want what's best for your child. She's treating her son the way I hope that I would treat my daughter. And in the end, that love and support will take him a long way. I know, I know. Safe, be strong. Let's do this. Get that stretcher in here. You're gonna bleed to death. Grand <laughs> the knife. Grand the knife. No, they're not dead. I can work with that.